In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about primitive verse reference types when it comes to designing your Java classes. Now, this is coming off the heels of a video I made about how Java is not too verbose and not too slow. And in that video, I took a look at a couple of things that uh, different ways that you can write Java code to be a little bit more concise. I got some great feedback from you guys saying that, you know, some of those tips were really good. So I want to continue down that road. Now, I didn't have a really great title to give this video. This is really a collection of questions that I feel like I get often when I'm just doing uh, tutorials on whatever. Things like, Dan, why did you use a primitive there? Or why did you use a reference type over a primitive? Um, so those are things that we can cover today. Really what I wanna cover are primitive versus reference types. Um, what is immutability? Like why do you care if an object is immutable and, and how can Java help with that? Um, one of the ways it can is by using record types. So we'll take a look at a record type. And then when it comes to records, Hey, how can I how can I write my own kind of compact constructor or canonical constructor when it comes to like validating data? Like I want to validate the record, the components of a record type. So those are the few random things I'm gonna cover today, and we're gonna do it by creating a Java project, taking a look at some of these kind of patterns, and we'll write some tests today. I always love writing tests, so let's write some tests for them. So with that, I'm gonna head over to uh, IntelliJ. Now you don't need IntelliJ, I'm using the ultimate edition. I always say whatever uh, tool, ID, text editor you can use to be most productive in, that's what you should be using. So feel free to use Visual Studio Code, Eclipse, uh, whatever you wanna use, we're gonna use IntelliJ here. So I'm gonna create a new project. This is going to be a Java project. This is going to use Maven. I'm going to call this, let's call this uh, primitive versus ref, um, or even, yeah, let's just leave it at that. So we have that name, we have our advanced settings here. I'm gonna say dev.danvega, the artifact is prim versus ref. So with that, I will go ahead and create this project. Um, I'm going to drop a dependency in here. So uh, I'm using a specific JUnit Jupyter version, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, I'll just say that we're using the latest 5.10.2. Now, uh, you can copy this from the repo. Everything that we're going to do today will be in a GitHub repository. You can find the link below. I just wanna spend a lot of time on this stuff. So let's get into some code. So I'm gonna start in main Java. We're going to create a package here. I'm gonna call this dev.danvega. And then in here, we'll create a uh, application class. Now, I don't think we're gonna use this too much, but maybe we will. So let's just go ahead and put that there. All right, and then I'm going to add this readme. I've obviously already went through this, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna add in some things so that we can cover a few things. Now you can grab this uh, in the repository. So first up, primitive verse reference types. Again, I often get asked why I might use something like integer instead of int when designing my domain classes. So let's take a look at an example of this. Let's go ahead and create a new Java class. We're gonna call this to do, and this is just going to be a uh, normal class here. So we might have something like user ID All right, so we have this class. Uh, I might come in here and create a constructor with none. So we have a no args constructor. Then we have an all args constructor. And yes, this is gonna get exhaustive here. We're gonna create our getters and setters. Obviously, if you're around and you watch my videos or you've been using Java, you know record types really help with this, which we'll get into, all right? Um, but right now, I just want this to be a normal class so we can take a look at it. Finally, I have a two string. So please don't run away from this video thinking 77 lines of code is what I need to write to write a simple data, data carrier class. You do not need to do this. This is for example purposes. So the question becomes like, why did I use integer? We have these primitive types in Java, right? So we have things like short, here, let me make this a comment. So we have things like short, byte, int, float, double, right? So I have these, um, yes, they are copilot, thank you. 
So I have these, so why don't I use those? And the main reason that you may not wanna use those in this case, where I have a class that represents some type in my system, is that because primitive data types cannot contain a null value, and they often have a default value. And that may be good in certain scenarios, especially like if you're just kind of uh, setting a instance field, right? Um, but in this case, it's not going to work for me because if I, if I were to go ahead and change this to an int, uh, we'll see this in a second, uh, this is going to have a default value of zero. And if that's okay, maybe that's okay. But in this case, I don't want a default user ID, like an ID of this record. So normally this might be lining up with the database and this is like a primary key and every value matters, right? So in this case, I wouldn't want a default value when I create an instance of this class, but we'll just keep that there for demo purposes. Now, in the case of a Boolean, this is going to be defaulted to null, but I can think of a scenario where, okay, Anytime I create a new to-do, I want the completed to have a default value of false. So now I can go ahead and use the primitive type here, and now that makes sense. So I can create an instance of this to-do and have the default value equal false. So let's test this out and go ahead and create a test. Uh, we'll call this our to-do test, and then I'll simply go ahead and paste this in here. We didn't reload our Maven changes. That's why it's erroring out. And now what I wanna do is, did I not call that user ID? Okay, just a couple of quick fixes there. Um, this should be set user ID. All right, just a couple of quick fixes there. So I have this test now, so I can create an instance of to-do. I'm only setting the user ID and the title because we've set primitives as the ID and the completed field. So now I know that I can create an instance of that, only set that two, set those two fields, and I know that ID is going to default to zero, and I know that completed is gonna to default to false. So I can go ahead and run this test against that, and we see that that passes. So that kind of shows us the difference between a primitive and a reference type. And then this is specifically talking about when you're working with types, you're going to be creating instances of. So that's that. Primitive versus reference types, when you should use one over the other, especially when it comes to domain object model design. All right, so let's go back to the readme. The next thing I wanna cover here is immutable objects. So immutable objects, or when you declare something final, the internal state must remain the same after its creation. So we'll take a look at an example of that in a second. I wanna show us being able to change the state of an object by creating an instance and then changing its state later. And then I wanna change this class to be immutable. So uh, let's start with our to-do class here. So right now this class is mutable. This means that we can create an instance of it and change the state. So if I were to just go into my to-do test, we see that all of that passes. Now I can set the title, so I can say set title equals second task. And now that I wanna make sure that that title has been changed, I can go ahead and run this test and everything should pass. This just shows us that we can create an object, change its state later, and be able to, to do that, right? What if I don't want that? Now, there are definitely some pros to taking in a class and making and making it immutable. Uh, you run into, your, your code's a little bit less error prone because you're not changing state of something later on. So let's take a look at this class and how we might be able to make this a class that we can't go, uh, make this an immutable class, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to make all of our um, fields here final. And so again, final is saying, hey, once you create it, we cannot change this. Now it's gonna start complaining. It's gonna tell us that, hey, uh, completed might not have been initialized. It needs to be initialized. So what we're gonna do is take away the um, no args constructor because we can't create an empty instance of the object and then set these later. And that is because we cannot have setters on this object because we don't wanna be able to set this later. We wanna create an instance of it, 
using the constructor, and that's it. Um, so now this class is immutable. You create an instance of it through a constructor. Once you have that instance, you cannot change the internal state. So if we go back to our, um, yeah, so we can't even compile this, right? Because we took away the constructor, we took away the setters, this isn't even going to work. So now what we need to do is we need to say new to do, and this is going to take one, zero, first task. Uh, we're gonna need to get rid of this to make this happy and now this can run. But now we can't change this later. So that is uh, immutable, and that's how you can create your own immutable classes. Uh, if you already have existing classes and you need to change them, this is a way to do so. Now, this is the long class. This is the big class that we've been talking about, 77 lines to create a simple data carrier class. Dan, I don't wanna do that. Don't worry, you don't have to do that because in Java, Oh, I want to say it first came out in 14, but I think it finalized in 16. We have this new type called a record type. And so we could easily convert this class to a record type. Uh, I think you can do that right here. In, um, I thought you could convert that, but we could easily convert this, but I'll show you a similar class just so we can write uh, some tests against that. And that is going to be a post class. Now this is going to be a record. So we're going to say post in IntelliJ, you can pick this as a type. You could say this is going to be a record. And then I can say um, integer, what are we going to have? ID, we're going to have a title, we're going to have a body, and we're going to have an author, right? So now that's it. We don't need the constructor. There is a canonical instructor, constructor created for us. There are not getters and uh, setters. There are getters because this is an immutable type. So just as we saw before, we are going to create an instance of this post using the constructor, and then there are no setters. We can't change this later. Uh, if you need to change something, you can create a new instance of a record with some properties from this one. That is something that's going to change in the JDK in the next couple of versions, which uh, we'll, see some, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that when that becomes more of a reality. Um, and then there's a equals and hash code written for you. There's a two string written for you, so you don't need to do any of this. Now what I wanna do is just create a quick test to show this off. So we're gonna say this is a post test. Uh, sure, let's go ahead and write this test. And this is just gonna say, should create a new post. Post, post equals new post. Again, we have to pass all those uh, parameters into the constructor. And what I wanna show off here is we're checking those to say, hey, one should be the post ID. You see the name of this, so post.id. There is no get ID or get title. The name of the getter function that is created for you inside of that record is the same name as the field. So you say post.id, post.title, post.body, post.author. There is no get there. This actually took me a minute to get my head around because I'm used to writing all my getters with get title or get body. Uh, but after, I don't know, a couple weeks, I was like, all right, this is actually much better. So um, that's how you can get at the information in the record. So I think I wanna show off one more thing, and that is, okay, how do you validate record components? And what do I mean by that? I wanna start with a new uh, class here, and I wanna call this event. So we'll come in here and create a new event. And this event is going to have a uh, couple of properties. So this is gonna have integer ID, we'll have string title, we'll have a local date time for the uh, start, and then we'll have a local date time for the end. So now what I wanna do is, if I were to go ahead and create an instance of this, there are some things that I want to make sure are valid. Um, we, we see that their local date time start and, start, start and end, but I don't want someone to create a new record of this event where the end time is before the start time. That would not be a valid instance of an event. Even though they're both local date times, that doesn't work for me. So what I want to do is validate that data. So underneath the hood, there's the canonical instructor that is created for us. We can create a compact constructor 
that allows us to just kind of work with whatever fields we want to work with. And, and as it says, it's compact because it's kind of short here, like just public event and two curly brace. Copilot's really trying to get um, get on here. So <laughs> we'll see if we can't uh, figure that out. So I want to say if um, end is before start, then that is not good, right? We want to be able to say throw new, sure, new illegal argument exception. And the end date must be after the start date. So that looks good. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and write a test to make sure that works. So let's say in my event, I'm going to go ahead and create a test. And all we're going to do here is make sure that, so all we're going to do here is we should throw an illegal argument exception when end is before start. So I set an event ID of one, a new title. I say the start time is now plus 30 days. The end time is now. So it can't start in 30 days and end right now. That would be illegal. <laughs> so let's go ahead and run that test and make sure that that works. And it does. So that is a way that you can uh, validate your uh, record components. You could also bring in something like the bean validator if you want to do like the annotations to say is something not null, is something before, min, max, whatever. So you can use the bean validation for that as well. In this case, I like this because this is kind of something that's custom. I'm checking a property against another property. And again, for me, I cannot create an instance of, event, of an event if this thing fails, if this validation fails. So that's that. So that's the README. Um, again, just a collection of questions I feel like I get uh, often when I'm kind of going through some tutorials. Again, maybe you picked up one little thing that you learned new today. And if that's the case, great. That's always the goal. Learn one little thing. Uh, and take that with you as you uh, are, are coding, uh, working through your day job, or just building out something for fun. So, hey, I hope you learned something new today, friends. If you did, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.